Hello everyone and welcome to another Unity tutorial video. Today let's chat about declaring and utilizing arrays both in their one-dimensional and two-dimensional forms. Oftentimes we want to store multiple pieces of data in a way that's easy to manage. This is not always possible by using standard variables as they can only contain a single value of the given data type and would require a variable per piece of information. To get around this, we can utilize arrays. To understand the concept of arrays, let's first review the concept of a variable. A variable is like a cardboard box. It can contain a piece of information and has a label to identify it and what kind of information it holds. An array is like a cardboard box of smaller cardboard boxes. The larger cardboard box retains its name property. Now each of these smaller cardboard boxes have their own identifiers in the form of an associated number. This identifying number is called an index. The index value starts at zero and counts up. For instance, this cardboard box is called words. Each smaller cardboard box contains a particular word. The first cardboard box, or index zero, has the word cat in it. The second cardboard box, or index one, has the word dog in it. Each smaller container can have a word within it, which can be accessed by first pointing to the array that holds them all, then looking for a particular index. Now that we get the concept of arrays, let's see them in code. To create an array, we type in the data type that we want, then put a set of square braces, give it a name, and voila, we've declared our first array. To initialize it, because it's considered a complex container, we have to use the new keyword. To so type in the equal sign, then put int, and then a set of braces once more. However, this time, we put a number inside this set of braces, indicating how many items will be in the array. The reason we do this is that because arrays are created with a predetermined size, which cannot be changed after creation. This number means there will be five items in an array, or if you use the early example, five smaller cardboard boxes. Now, we could just stop and put a semicolon here and actually make use of the indexes later, or we can assign information to the indexes right now. To do so, we put a set of curly braces and then the values within it, separated by commas. So for here, I would do a one, then a comma, then two, and so on and so forth. This means our first smaller cardboard box will have a value of one, and the second, the value of two. Now that we have our array declared, let's actually access those indexes. To access an index within an array, let's first type the name of the array, then put a set of square braces, and then put the number of the index within the braces. This particular syntax is how you access an index. For testing purposes, Let's create a print statement that will show the index in the output console window. We can do this a number of times, changing the index value to match the particular item we want. This is great when we have a long list of things we want to store together, but it's only one dimensional. What if we wanted more options? But what if we wanted a two dimensional array? 2D arrays are where things get a bit more complicated as there are actually two versions to think about. The first one is called a jagged array and the second is called a multi-dimensional array. To start, let's look at the jagged array. The jagged array is an array of arrays. To visualize this, let's take that boss example from earlier. Instead of a single row of smaller boxes, there are now multiple rows of smaller boxes. We now have the concept of rows and columns. This gives us the allowance of having this big overarching container with columns associated to different aspects of the data we wish to store inside. The special benefit of the jagged array in particular is that each column can be different lengths. So if we wanted to use a relatable example, it could be a 2D array called characters, with each column representing a character, and each row of those columns representing details about the characters. Now that we conceptually understand a jagged array, let's actually create one. The creation of a jagged array is a bit peculiar. Because it's an array of arrays, we have to initialize them in a particular order. Taking the line from earlier, where we would put the square braces, we're actually going to add a second of them right after, thus making it a 2D jagged array. However, for the set of braces with a number, we're going to provide a number in the first set, but not the second set. The reason for this is because the first set represents the columns, which is a list of arrays. Those arrays that it holds have to be initialized separately, as they can all be different sizes. From the current numbers we've given it, the array has three columns. Let's actually create the rows now. Moving down to the start function, let's call our array like we did the one-dimensional array. Let's use index zero as our target, and let's assign it a new integer array just like this. Let's give it a size of three as well. With this, the first column of the two-dimensional array will have three rows within it. Just to fill up the other two columns, let's copy and paste this line, changing the column from one to two, and then assign each a brand new integer array. Now that that's done, let's access our rows. Moving down the line, type in the name of the array, put two sets of braces, putting zero in the first set of braces and zero in the second set. This means we are accessing row zero of column zero. Throw this line within a print statement and we have the ability to retrieve and display whatever would be in that index. 
However, we don't actually have anything in this array, so let's actually add something. When we create each column array, let's assign it some basic numbers like we did for our first one-dimensional array. Simply put a set of curly braces, then a series of numbers separated by commas. Do that for each column array that we've created. With that done, accessing column zero, row zero, should print out this value. That is the process for creating and working with jagged arrays. With that out of the way, let's learn about the easier to learn multidimensional arrays. Multidimensional arrays are still two-dimensional, but unlike jagged arrays, which can have columns of differing lengths, a multidimensional array is completely uniform, meaning all columns share the same length and all rows share the same length. This uniformity makes the array easier to generate as you don't need to explicitly initialize the array separately. For those familiar with mathematics, a multidimensional array is like a matrix of mathematics. For those like me, who loathe math, this might cause flashbacks to dark times. But don't worry, this much easier to understand here. Let's make one of these arrays. Starting with the array declaration at the top of the script, where we place the first set of braces, we aren't actually going to add a second set. We're just going to place a comma within the braces. We can also initialize the array here as well, unlike the jagged array. So let's put a new keyword, then int, and a set of braces. Inside, we are going to put two numbers separated by a single comma. The first number represents the columns, and the second number the rows. With this, all columns and rows are initialized already, and we can go about populating the indexes down in the start function. Simply put the array name, a set of single braces, then a number for which column you like, a comma, and the row you'd like. It's as simple as that. And that about wraps that up. That's an overview of both one-dimensional and two-dimensional arrays, including the two variants, the jagged and the multi-dimensional array. For a two-dimensional array specifically, be wary of what you choose in your work. Jagged arrays are great when you want the containers to be sized exactly, while multi-dimensional arrays are great when you have strips of uniform data to store. Learning how to use these right takes time, but always challenge your logical use of an array and choose what you think is right, and you'll get the hang of it in no time. And that's it. Thank you once again for joining me. If you liked this video or found it useful, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Most importantly though, leave your thoughts and ideas in the comment section below as I'd love to hear them. As always, I'll see you in the next one.